Alicia Butts with the CTV News Update. Day three of the Trump impeachment trial is underway. Democrats are expected to provide additional evidence they say will prove Trump's impact on the riot and what they describe as a lack of remorse. House managers are expected to conclude their opening arguments today. Yesterday, Democrats played never-before-seen video from inside the Capitol during the deadly January 6 attack at the Capitol. Up first today was one of the House managers who laid out the case that the rioters were following Trump's order. Their own statements before, during, and after the attack make clear the attack was done for Donald Trump at his instructions and to fulfill his wishes. Donald Trump had sent them there. They truly believed that the whole intrusion was at the president's orders, and we know that because they said so. As one man explained on a live stream he taped from inside the Capitol, quote, our president wants us here. We wait and take orders from our president. Trump's attorneys are expected to begin their opening arguments tomorrow. Prince George's County residents continue to line up to get vaccinated for COVID-19. This was the scene yesterday, excuse me, this was the scene this morning at the Sports and Learning Complex where residents were rolling up their sleeves. Many told us this was their second dose of the vaccine. They also told us it took them between five minutes to a few days to schedule their appointments. It's uh, not the easiest thing to do, but it's not impossible. I think it's being done very well. This is my second time here. And from start to finish, I think it's about an hour's process, as you can see, with a lot of people. So I think they've constructed this pretty well, and they're doing it, as far as I'm concerned, uh, very efficient. Yeah, I am frustrated that I'm the only one standing down there, and just because I'm 10 minutes early, they won't let me in. For a complete list of vaccination sites, visit PrinceGeorgesCountyMD.gov. The number of people currently hospitalized from the coronavirus continues to decrease. There are currently 1,272 people being treated for COVID-19 at Maryland hospitals, down 10 in the last 24 hours. 21 more people died from the virus yesterday, bringing the total to 7,288 confirmed deaths in the state. Patricia Vallone has more on the latest numbers. Among those hardest hit during the pandemic, those in assisted living facilities, there have been 1,756 coronavirus deaths for people living in those facilities throughout the state. 18 staff members have also died. In Prince George's County, Cadia Healthcare in Hyattsville had 30 deaths and Clinton Nursing had 41. Hill Haven Assisted Living had 22 deaths and Doctors Community Rehab Center had 14. Largo Nursing and Rehabilitation Center has had 12 deaths and Patuxent River Health has had 11. Patricia Vallone, CTV News. Meantime, CVS and Walgreens begin delivering the vaccine to their pharmacies starting tomorrow. At least 51 pharmacies across the state, including dozens in supermarkets and large chain stores, have been pre-registering those in phase one. To find an appointment, enter your zip code at coronavirus.maryland.gov slash pages slash vaccine. Montgomery County, like many jurisdictions, is struggling to get its residents vaccinated. During a recent council meeting, which included local and state health leaders, lawmakers were informed that the county is receiving limited doses of the Moderna vaccine. The county is currently working to get its health care professionals and seniors 75 years and older vaccinated. Local health leaders say the county has had issues with the state's online registration system, including its language translation features. The county has been advocating to get more doses that are independent from those hospital and those pharmacy uh, uh, entities, but it's just not enough doses that the state is receiving to allow us to have a lot, a, a, a higher allotment. We're working with Johns Hopkins and Holy Cross and Washington Adventist and Suburban Hospital to say, hey, if you have any unused doses based on your prioritization and allocation uh, scheme, then we can provide you with names in partnership or identify names. So for example, Johns Hopkins um, is partnering with us. They're getting their doses directly from the Maryland Department of Health 
but they're still vaccinating educators and seniors and individuals in 1C who may be 65 years or older to help us uh, with our vaccination process. The County Health Department is also working to make sure that the vaccine distribution is more equitable. The Washington Council of Governments is updated on the COVID-19 vaccine rollout in our region. Members met virtually yesterday afternoon. A spokesperson says much of the discussion centered around the challenges facing distribution and how to increase the supplies of the much needed COVID vaccine. The state opened this vaccination site at Six Flags last week in a bid to increase inoculations. COG says it can play a role. You know, obviously, there's a there's a a few things that we can do, particularly uh, because of the the power of all the jurisdictions together. Uh, we have in the past, uh, in the recent past, uh, taken up issues of um, coordination amongst the jurisdictions uh, of vaccine. Uh, we have advocated for greater distribution of uh, vaccine to the region. Uh, particularly, uh, there was a, a, a COG executive committee action to seek uh, additional vaccines for uh, the district, for example, when the original um, uh, allocations were, were uh, stated to be based on population. A fire rips through a home in Landover early this morning. As a result, four people are displaced. Crews were called to the 6500 block of Old Landover Road around 2 a.m. When firefighters arrived, they found fire coming from the back of the home. The blaze caused an estimated $100,000 in damages. No word yet on what caused the fire. Looks like February is the month for snowy weather. Once again, Marylanders and others along the East Coast awakened to a white carpet on the ground. But this morning, the majority of roads were clear. There's a 40% chance of more snow early this evening, but it tapers off after that. Initial reports had forecasted a mix of snow and ice throughout tomorrow, but those reports have been updated to a very low chance of precipitation. You're watching CTV News. I'm Keisha Butts, back in one moment. You're looking at me in the future, okay. Hi, Isaac. Hi. Wait a second. Do you know who I am? Julia. This is Jaina. It's the future. I just wanted to talk to you about what happened with those two girls. Oh, yeah. Do you it was this girl that I was getting bullied by that one day at PE when they were like yelling at me and then you just linked arms with me. I don't think you know how much like that helped me because like I finally like knew that I had somebody. Because of you Isaac and what you did for me years ago, I grew up to be more independent and love myself and just be a little bit more confident. Aww, <laughs> I'm like a little tearing up right now. Just to see her in the future just to blossom and look beautiful and that was really amazing. There was a time in my life where I was extremely homesick. I decided that I needed a pet. When I first saw a turtle, my heart was full. He jumped up and kissed me and like jumped right into my arms. I immediately went up to the volunteers at the shelter and said, I want him. Like, He's got to come home with me. Not anything but lonely. Every day with Turtle is a perfect day and keeps me company when I'm doing schoolwork. I like it when he jumps up on the table, too. He is a veggie thief. He's an incredible companion and my best friend. I can't say that I've met anybody that doesn't love him, too. When I adopted Turtle, I discovered all the things that make him unique. He's a little bit of a lot of things, but mostly he's all pure love. Welcome back. Dozens of complaints and of misconduct and discriminatory practices by officers in the Prince George's County Police Department will be made public. This after a federal judge ruled to unseal an expert report. The report will be largely unredacted, meaning names of many of the officers cited will be available. The report indicated the department was not adequately investigating discrimination allegations brought by officers of color against white officers. The report is part of a discrimination lawsuit filed against the police department. 
wrongly convicted Marylanders would be financially compensated for their years in prison under a bill before the General Assembly. SB 14, or the Walter, excuse me, or the Walter Lomax Act, passed the Senate unanimously Wednesday. The bill is named after an exoneree who served 39 years in prison for a murder he didn't commit. Lomax suffered a near-fatal heart attack in Annapolis last year while lobbying lawmakers to pass compensation legislation. A cross-filed measure is now before the House Judiciary Committee. According to reports, a large percentage of teens admit to experiencing anxiety and depression, and one in six contemplate suicide. Legislation now before the Maryland General Assembly would grant students excused absences for mental health reasons. The proposal would allow one absence every quarter without needing a doctor's note. It's a measure former Maryland delegate Dan Morham says is much needed during the pandemic. Overdose deaths are up in Maryland and throughout the United States. Domestic violence, alcoholism, uh, depression, uh, it's understandable. So people really, we, we've, we take, it's the epidemic that's below the epidemic that we read about all the time. But these problems, uh, confinement, uh, unemployment, and all the stress that goes uh, with that uh, are really taking their toll. And so whoever it is, whether it's grade school kids or seniors or adults or anybody, we all ought to recognize that we're stressed a lot more than we may acknowledge and probably some degree of planning and therapy or relief or whatever anybody can arrange is a, is a good idea. The measure is sponsored by Delegate Alonzo Washington. HB 61 is currently before the House Ways and Means Committee. The General Assembly's recent override vote will make Maryland a leader in prescription drug affordability. This according to healthcare advocates. The House of Delegates has voted to override the governor's veto of a bill that would permanently fund the Maryland Prescription Drug Affordability Board. According to the Maryland Citizens Health Initiative, the board had to borrow money to do its work to lower drug prices. This will allow the board to hire staff, and to hire, get office space and to gather data that is often expensive on how, how high how prescription drug costs are. And then with all this information to put together a plan on how to make prescription drugs more affordable, first for state and local governments, and then for all of us. So that takes resources and now they will have it. The veto override voted 95 to 38. One lucky high school girl could receive a $125,000 scholarship to the school of her dreams through Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated. It's part of the, excuse me, it's part of the Sorority Centennial Scholarship. To qualify, you must already be accepted into college, have a minimum GPA of a 3.0, and have demonstrated community service. This is the second year Zeta Phi Beta is hosting the scholarship. If we're able to offer um, uh, a deserving young student um, the ability to go to school without worrying about how to pay for it. They can concentrate on their studies. They can focus on what it is that you know they want to do and it will help to relieve a lot of the stress that families experience when students go to college. February 28th is the last day to apply. For more details, visit the website on your screen. Well, let's get a quick check on our three-day weather forecast. Tonight, cloudy and snowy with a low around 25. Friday, mostly cloudy with more snow expected in the morning. Daytime temps reach a high near 30 and a low around 25. Saturday, a wintry mix throughout the day with a high near 31 and a low around 27. Sunday, mostly cloudy with a high near 39 and a low around 24 degrees. And now for the community calendar. The Chevrolet Police Department in partnership with the Office of the State's Attorney for Prince George's County is hosting an expungement fair. Legal professionals will be there to help evaluate your record, file paperwork, and more. The event is Saturday, February 20th from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. at the Chevrolet Community Center for those with Maryland arrest and convictions only. You must bring your ID and court documents if available. Masks are required. For more information, visit chevrolet-md.gov. And that wraps up our newscast. Join us again tomorrow. Have a good night.